the internet's most notorious imposters. This is 39 minutes, the shortest wavy video you'll ever see on his channel. But okay, let's see what top time is on. Viral stories of fraud are common on the internet, and to me, some of the most unsettling are cases involving imposters. Take, for example, crimes like stolen valor and police impersonators. The demented perpetrators of these crimes are frequently exposed in videos on YouTube. Videos that show these culprits using fake credentials and fraudulent uniforms to pose as authority figures in public. And on the other hand, you have a cohort of individuals busted for faking disabilities. Sick imposters posing. If this nigga did it, whatever he is accused of doing, he did it. He did it. It's society's most vulnerable in an effort to solicit charity and special treatment from medical workers. And the aforementioned is really only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to viral imposter stories. From a teenager performing a police traffic stop using bogus credentials, to a sign language interpreter exposed as a fraud, to a man who allegedly faked Down syndrome for diaper changes, these are the internet's most viral imposters. Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke. Why? <laughs> Why? Okay, we're skipping ads. So the link is in the description and big thanks to Bespoke for sponsoring. One of the most trusted and revered professions in the United States is that of the medical doctor. The profession comes with a lot of responsibility and power as well. This story involves a young man who managed to fake credentials over a period of years, successfully masquerading as a medical professional and defrauding the public out of thousands of dollars in the process. Malachi Robinson was born in West Palm Beach, Florida in May of 1997. This young man had dreams of becoming a doctor and what we found- Oh, this, uh, so late BBG. this, uh, this, 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 the hill cut nigga, this, this, this Malachi, this that ass nigga. Yeah, this nigga's a D1 scammer. He's never learned his lesson even to this day. in the United States is that of the medical doctor. The profession comes with a lot of responsibility and power as well. This story involves a young man who managed to fake credentials over a period of years, successfully masquerading as a medical professional and defrauding the public out of thousands of dollars in the process. Malachi Robinson was born in West Palm Beach, Florida in May of 1997. This young man had dreams of becoming a doctor, and what we find is that in his teenage years, Malachi attempts to become one by any means necessary. In January of 2015, 17-year-old Malachi- Bro, just, just really just take a look to analyze this nigga real quick, bro. We just really sit here and just think, why did his barber do this to him? His barber really started this origin story. I've never seen a nigga with a cut this fucked up. He's the best at Smash Bros. This nigga Malachi Love Robinson was set up for failure. This nigga looked like an extra in Corey in the house. I'm not gonna hold you. It's actually ridiculous. Um, how the fuck do you trick people into believing you're a doctor? What if you actually prescribe someone with something and they find out you're not actually a doctor and put up to the pharmacy? Like, bro, I'm telling y'all, this dude was actually doing that, bro. Like, this nigga's actually evil as hell. Robinson was taken into custody after it was discovered he had spent several weeks walking the halls of St. Mary's Medical Center while wearing a lab coat and stethoscope. The young man's presence being completely unauthorized and it was obviously suspected that he was trying to pose as a doctor. When being questioned, Malachi claimed that he was shadowing a physician, even adding that the staff who reported him, quote, was supposed to know what he was doing there. When directly asked by authorities if he ever had attended medical school, Malachi responded no. Naturally, because Malachi was a minor at the time, his mother would become involved in this situation. 
His mother was said to have defended the young man, claiming that Malachi had some sort of mental illness that he- You know when shit like this always happens, that's what they always blame it on? Malachi Love Robinson is probably like, the, the dude, the funny thing is the dude isn't stupid. This is the thing, the dude isn't stupid, bro. Like he's actually a, a, a smart guy, bro. Like he's not, I know a lot of people in headlines, you say that the nigga's stupid and he's an idiot and everything. He's not even, he's not even an idiot, bro. He's actually pretty smart, nigga. You have to be, you have to be very smart to come up with this whole plan, get a whole uh pharmacy and be doing all this. You have to be actually very intelligent to be doing this shit. The dude just is lazy. I'm not gonna lie. The dude just doesn't want to go. He refuses to go to medical school, bro. He just refuses to go to school, bro. You have to do that. Just go to school, little nigga. Oh my god, I was in love with playing manipulate the bro just refused to go to school though. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why he, he just will not go to school, bro. He was smart as fuck if he was a doctor for a long ass time, just go to school. Like if you're trying to be a doctor or a lawyer, you have to go to school. You cannot skip school, bro. Like come on. Refused to take medication for. In the end, the St. Mary's medical facility declined to press charges and the police ruled that no crime had been committed. Malachi was let off. But that wouldn't be the end of the doctor impersonation route for this charlatan, as later in the year he would do something along the same line. In October of 2015, Malachi was accused of spending close to three weeks practicing medicine without a license at New Direction, a treatment office that specialized in addiction recovery in Boynton Beach, Florida. Around this time, authorities suspected that Malachi was illegally performing massage therapy at the Close to three weeks practicing October of 2015, Malachi was accused of spending close to three weeks practicing medicine without a license at New Direction, a treatment office that specialized in addiction recovery in Boynton Beach, Florida. Around this time, authorities suspected that Malachi was illegally performing massage therapy at this facility. What's wrong with this nigga, bro? I'm telling you, when I tell y'all, he refuses to go to school. He, does, he literally will not go to school. However, the story from the rehabilitation center itself was a bit different. Employees working at the center claimed that Malachi had told them that he was 28 years old and had a PhD in psychology. When he came to us, he said he was 28 and that he was sick for 10 years in France and that he, when he came to the United States, that they made a mistake and put his date of arrival on the birth certificate instead of his date of birth. Malachi had allegedly forged a birth certificate to reflect this age, and even allegedly provided the center a bogus diploma from Arizona State University saying that he was a doctor. Malachi wasn't actually working at the center as a massage therapist. Using these fake documents, he had managed to convince management there to allow him to have a program director job, and according to reports, he was making a $70,000 salary. In lieu of these discoveries, the Florida Department of Health had reason to believe that Malachi was misleading the public and sent him a cease and desist letter. The department has probable- Mind you, cease and desist letter. So they gave him a chance to basically like, yo, stop doing this. Even though this is highly illegal and you can't- I thought I heard something outside. Even though this is highly illegal and you can't do this, niggas gave him a cease and desist letter, bro. Stop that honking, nigga. People cause to believe that Malachi Love Robinson of West Palm Beach, Florida, is not licensed by the Department or Board of Medicine and is practicing as a medical doctor. And you think with the government now involved, this would be the end of his medical imposter activities. But it wasn't. As Malachi was somehow able to attain a certificate to provide health care by the American Association of Drugless Practitioners, a diploma essentially stating that he was legally allowed to perform alternative medical therapies. How? 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 <laughs> How? Was he acquiring such items? Think about that at the item shop. How?
The organization that issues these certificates approved Mr. Robinson after re only in Florida, by the way, viewing copies of degrees and diplomas sent to them by mail. The procurement of this credential would keep the government off of his back for some time, though it is important to note that legally the document doesn't allow one to diagnose or treat any medical conditions. Seeing that he could now outsmart the government, he started to get more brazen. Malachi continued his fraud throughout South Florida, attempting to practice medicine at anywhere that would give him an opportunity. He maintained a plethora of websites that advertised his practice. How does he have five stars on any website? Actually, Blue Rye is not only in Florida, it's everywhere. Right, right, right. Actually, Blue Rye. Some of the websites allegedly hosting fake consumer reviews that helped build up his uh. reputation. On practitioner review site healthgrades.com, Malachi was listed as a doctor with a specialization in naturopathy and psychology. In the biography of the page, he wrote, quote, I value my practice skills, which include great communication skills as well as timely and prompt care. I am a strong believer that patients in general are the strongest medical tools there is. The man's profile boasting a five-star review. And as you can see here, he was the owner and physician of New Birth New Life Medical Center, LLC. In 2016, at the age of- He wasn't playing <laughs> the government wasn't playing at all these niggas dumb as fuck. What's wrong with what's wrong, what's wrong with this nigga, bro? 18, Malachi somehow manages to attain a medical office, practicing under the ruse of him being a 25-year-old doctor. Malachi had managed to deceive an investor to being a business partner who would contribute $10,000 into getting this office. According to the Facebook There's a lot of hows, there's a lot of whys in this whole story. Page associated with the practice, Malachi claimed to have offered holistic and urgent care as well as family counseling at the New Birth New Life Center. Certain journalists in Florida were privy to Malachi and his medical impersonation schemes and actually went to this place to do a sort of ambush interview with him. When confronted by journalists, Malachi would say he never Like this nigga is so fucking disgusting. Dog, this motherfucker thing hold on, hold on. You said some fucking Water. Earth. Fire. Air. My grandmother used to tell me stories about the old days. A time of peace. When the Avatar kept balance between the Water Tribes, Earth Kingdom, Fire Nation, and Air Nomads. But that all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar mastered all four elements. Like, what is wrong Only with this? he could stop the roof. What is wrong with this nigga, bro? Oh, my fucking God, bro. This place to do a sort of ambush interview with him. When confronted by journalists, Malachi would say he never claimed to be a doctor, even going as far as taping over the M in the MD next to his name by one of the doors. Instead, he says he is an ND or a naturopathic doctor. You've got a lot of sites online, all claiming that you're a doctor. Well, no, they don't claim medical doctor. That was, he, I did not know he sounded like that. <laughs> I thought he was gonna have like some, some bass in his way versa. Well, no, um, act bro sound like fucking gumball, nigga. What the hell? I'm not a medical doctor, as I am, am a work doctor. Well, no, they don't claim medical doctor, me medical doctor, as I am, am aware of. Um, they, if you could stop recording, please. I will lie like that. Love Robinson says he is not an MD, as his taped over clinic sign says. That's a mistake. He says that he didn't authorize, but an ND or naturopathic doctor. The state of Florida doesn't officially license naturopathic doctors. Literally anyone in Florida could call themselves that and it wouldn't be illegal. In one famous interview- What? I blame that. That's just L. That's just L. Uh, Florida right there. I'm not gonna. Lose. You can blame nobody but Florida, bro. That's ridiculous. That bro, bro shouldn't even. If he was in any other state, he wouldn't have gotten that far. That's just some Florida shit, bro. Malachi brags to reporters, touting various accomplishments and patient recoveries that he had facilitated. I've done a lot of courses 
in institutions uh, locally and some non. This nigga is playing fucking phone tag with his barber, bro. He's playing freeze tag with his barber. His barber needs to be arrested just with him. I'm not gonna. Non locally in alternative medicine. I've attended many conventions and conferences, and I've done many. He's playing the longest hide and seek game with his barber. He has not found him yet. Exams. The level of fraud Malachi had managed to pull off at this point is honestly impressive, but he couldn't escape the medical board and the government forever. For quite some time, the Florida Department of Health had been investigating Malachi and specifically his internet listings. Through various tips submitted to their office, the department had compiled a mountain of evidence suggesting that Malachi was fraudulently attempting to practice medicine. On February 16th of 2016, Malachi was busted in a sting operation after performing a medical exam on an undercover agent. The agent Yo, visiting up, Malachi's BG, clinic of complaining of an itchy throat. While Malachi would admit to the exam, he claimed that no diagnoses were ever issued nor prescriptions given, adding again that he was not impersonating a doctor. Malachi's arrest would go viral on the internet and the world became fascinated by this 18-year-old kid who was impersonating King a Cloudy physician. Put on a Malachi would later be charged with seven counts of grand damn it took him to jesus christ oh my God, his cut is better but holy fuck nigga holy shit oh my god yo he pushed my nigga back though damn his barber in jail better than out there but they pushed him back though oh my god that's crazy <laughs> yo they pushed my nigga back Damn, that's that's tough. That's tough. I'm praying my barber. If my barber ever puts me that far back, bro, I'm not going. You can just cut it all off at that point, bro. That's actually terrible. Grand theft and forgery. After it was discovered that Malachi had allegedly stolen money from one of his patients' bank accounts. After posting a $21,000 bail, Malachi sat down for an interview where he would again claim that he never titled himself an MD. Many types of degrees out there that hold the title as doctor, whether they are a physicist or an engineer, just because someone has a title doctor in front of their name does not necessarily imply MD. But even if Malachi never claimed he was an MD, which uh, is not true, other evidence started coming to the surface that just painted him as a straight up fraud regardless. In one broadcast, it was revealed- Well, okay, after looking on that just painted him as a straight up fraud regardless and blue rod you're not focusing on the thing we know this nigga's a scam ass loser ass motherfucker i'm just saying after looking at the cut in this photo right here i don't think that jail barber did him any disservice i think that jail barber did as much as he can i think the jail barber did as like much as he can he i don't think he works miracles i think he did as much as he can keep it that one broadcast, it was revealed that an elderly woman was treated by Malachi for severe stomach pain and was charged $3,500 for the meager service. Malachi never broke again. And even while out on bail and Finesse. facing criminal charges, Malachi still couldn't stay out of trouble. As sometime after Jesus posting Christ. bail, Malachi was arrested in the state of Virginia for lying in an attempt to get a $35,000 loan to purchase a Jaguar, reportedly claimed. So this dude just just cannot follow any type of legal rules at all, bro. At all. Claiming he was a physician and was purchasing vehicles for himself and his grandmother. Malachi would be compelled to serve a year in jail in Virginia and was later extradited to Florida to face trial for his fraud charges. During his 2018 trial, Malachi's grandfather defended the young man. Damn, you really- that is terrible. I'm not gonna lie to you. During his 2018 trial, Malachi- That is awful, bro. He got soldier boy. Oh damn, that's fucked up, bro. That's fucked up. I'm not gonna lie. That's tough. That's tough. His grandfather defended the young man, saying that Malachi was just trying to help people and made the wrong. I know you're his father, but please shut the fuck up, bro. Cut. Please cut that out. Decisions in doing so. He was. Trey was good, bro. Always uh, trying to help people, help somebody. He just. Made some wrong choice. Yeah, I guarantee his father is a D1 scammer. Taught him everything he knows. In January of 2018, Malachi pled guilty to grand theft, practicing medicine without a license, and other charges. He would be sentenced to serve three and a half years in a maximum security prison in Fort Myers, Florida. While incarcerated, Malachi did an interview with Inside Edition where he shed some light on why he did what he did. 
basically he always wanted to be a physician and help people and he's so maybe just maybe and this is just i don't what do i know about anything about like education or like fucking being like not even smart just being like somewhat competent maybe just go to school maybe maybe blue ride well maybe he didn't have the money to okay well maybe just don't do illegal shit nigga you don't got nigga if you don't have the bread to go to school either take a loan out nigga don't do the shit that you're doing now or switch career paths nigga i don't know what to tell you i don't know i don't know what to tell him bro i'm not gonna lie to you bro Please, like still wanted to be a doctor when he got out <laughs> fucking good luck with that dude i 100 percent regret what, I, what i've done and the reason being is that because is number one I've met <laughs> looking at this thick head my life up you know a, a great deal you still want to be a doctor i do on September 23rd of 2019, Malachi was released from prison after serving 20 months. And you think after spending a good deal of time in prison, Malachi would, you know, try to live life on the straight and narrow, avoid trouble. Well, at least he doesn't impersonate any more doctors, but he does get in fucking trouble. In January of 2020, under the Broker, name of Alex Robinson, it was being reported by police that he had gotten a job at the United States of Freight, a shipping brokerage based in Delray Beach. Delray police claimed that Malachi had stolen more than $10,000 from the company by diverting company payments to his own. He don't like freedom. I'm assuming that everybody from Florida does not like freedom. Him and Kodak. I'm, I'm assuming if you live in the state of Florida and you're in the maximum security prison, you just don't like being free. So you just try to get them in, in jail, however. Bank account. When suspected of stealing, Malachi texted his boss and apologized, saying that he didn't want to go to jail. In December of 2022, Malachi would plead guilty to stealing more than $10,000 from his employer. He received a sentence Who hired of over this two nigga? years and four months. At the time of me making this video, Malachi is now in prison and is 25 years old. The same age he claimed to be when he was posing as a physician. And what has been a life filled with fraud, that's the ongoing story of Malachi Love Robinson. Like, bro, with all that energy, with all those, like, with all that bullshittery, bro, could have just actually went on the path to be a physician or a doctor. Or a nurse, that's okay, bad pause. Or a nurse, bro. I don't understand, Jack. How we feel, okay, before we go into the next story, how we feel about uh, Malachi Love Robinson, though? How we feel about him? Bro, went to Hustle University. Maybe put that energy in the school. Ninja Knight, he a bitch. I'm in Florida, don't make fun of me. And just, just don't go to jail, bro. So, but yeah, he just like me. Oh, man. Fuck that nigga. We're gonna flee the country, still getting caught. Like I'm telling y'all, he's gonna get out in like a year and a half. He gonna be right back. He gonna be right back. He gonna be right back. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was say, I don't, I don't, I really just don't get how that snow cone head ass nigga literally fumbled that many times, or how he even got that far. If you've spent any good time on YouTube, there's a high chance you've likely gone down one of these stolen valor rabbit holes. You know these videos where like a former serviceman catches some guy in a shoddy military uniform in public and confronts them over essentially faking being in the army, navy, whatever. Because I'm a United matter, States Army fucking ranger and this guy is not. My friend that I have four brothers that who died with this goddamn tab on their arm. There are thousands of videos like this on YouTube, but arguably the most popular and most compelling by way of its video footage is the case of Sean Yetman. But before we get into Yetman, let Okay, so we see the um individual that we're dealing with here. <sighs> Let's talk a bit about Stolen Valor itself. The Stolen Valor Act, passed in 2005, made it a misdemeanor crime to falsely represent oneself as having received any sort of military decoration or... Oh,
how far are you in this way video? Because this started. man is a, li a literal criminal. Well, you, are you watching? Yes. He just like before. How is he getting away with this? We're, we just finished that story. We just started the second one. So, I mean, you're here. So, we'll go ahead and... Um, what happened at the end of that story? Nigga went to prison. He got out of prison. And then he scammed some more niggas. So, he went to prison again. How long did it take him to get out? He got out. He was sentenced to three years the first time. Got out on two years and then went back to jail and then he got sentenced now he's sentenced to one and a half or no he's now he's sentenced to two years and now he's currently in prison <laughs> well let's see yeah what y'all think he gonna do yeah y'all so weird bro chat why don't you tighten the fuck up nigga was i doing that uh like miles morales i'm calm man tell that man i said battle man no cap bro yep on the wall and everything, but naked too. Huh? Um, My bag broke just before I got here. I had to double knot that joint. Let me see. I need to switch joints. Oh, Chat, y'all know how this go. Let me see if y'all can can <coughs> see it. Let me see it. Try to switch that. Okay. I would say I'm not gonna be here long, but every time I say that, I'm gonna be here long. You so. gonna be here long? Trust hey, me. Hey, hey, hey. Chat, let me know if you be here here headphones. <laughs> he not wearing the fucky Kong fit. I'm not wearing a what? The Funky Kong fit. I'm not gonna lie, I definitely thought about it too. <laughs> Y'all can hear it? I'm not wearing George. Gone down one of yeah, if I wasn't wearing George, I would've kicked you out of my gonna lie to you. <laughs> George would've built? <laughs> yeah, George would be insane. I don't even I don't even own George. It's crazy. You definitely used to own, own George, I'm not gonna lose you. Yeah, back in RTN, you know what I'm saying? You used to definitely but it was for the cause, you know what I'm saying? I had to wear jeans. Okay, hold on. Well, since Miles here, let's let's get to the start of the second story. We just we just were like a minute into it, so. Kai Love Robinson. Those things loud, Jesus. If you've spent any good time on YouTube, there's a high chance you've likely gone down one of these stolen Valor rabbit holes. You know these videos where like a former serviceman catches some guy in a shoddy military uniform in public and confronts them over essentially faking being in the army, navy, whatever. Because I'm a United matter, States Army fucking ranger and this guy is not. My friend that I have four brothers. brothers. To fake that is crazy, first of all. Goddamn tab on their arm. There are thousands of videos like this on YouTube, but arguably the most popular and most compelling by way of its video footage is the case of Sean Yetman. But before we get into Yetman, let's Sounds talk a bit about Stolen Valor itself. The Stolen Valor Act, passed in 2005, made it a misdemeanor crime to Faking falsely his, yeah. represent oneself as having received any sort of- well, First of all, it's illegal, but I don't know why you want to fake- I know people sometimes they be like when they go to the movies they be like oh yeah I'm on I'm in the military or something so they can get like fucking two dollars off the movie or something like that but to actually put on the uniform nigga and then try to flex like you're an actual <laughs> military person now and you not in the military at all is lame as fuck I'm not going that's the first thing I thought like the military benefits yeah but you this but, that nigga was really in the military but, like <laughs> yeah like I be putting on this shit. uniform is kind of crazy um. Let me see. It seems today that we that all we see is ass, nigga. What you mean by that? Military huh? decoration or medal. Johnny's so a convicted man. of committing stolen valor, one can mode. face up to a year in federal prison. A revised version of the law in 2013 made it a crime for a person to fraudulently claim to have received a valor reward with the intention of obtaining money, property, or other tangible benefit. The motivation for one to want to commit stolen valor is pretty obvious. They want the respect that comes with being a combat veteran or a military serviceman. You want the respect of the Dude, that is the lamest shit I've ever heard. When's the last time you heard somebody say thank you for your service? Like Bro, you want they, the they respect they ever do it anymore. Yeah, I don't hear people saying it like that to, to military personnel like that. We still appreciate everybody in the military. But um that's lame as fuck. You want the respect? How less how bad does your life have to be going to where you just want respect for being in the military? So you're just faking being in the military. You just want fake dating. respect at that. That's crazy. <laughs> And they okay. also want the monetary <laughs> incentives such as military right. discounts. And with mentioning military discounts, that brings us to alleged stolen valor committer Sean Yetman. In 2014, Sean Yetman was caught on video at the Oxford Valley Mall in Pennsylvania masquerading as an army ranger. The video showcasing this man went viral on YouTube and got over 10 million views. The video being filmed by a man named Ryan Burke, who is a former army infantryman. 
In the video, Ryan Burke approaches Sean under the ruse of being in awe of his military decorum and wanting his kid to be able to meet the guy. Hey, sir. Hey, my son, lucky to meet you. He really uh, admires guys in the Army. Hey, buddy. I'm Sean. Suspe I know his heart was in his ass. I know it's because all it takes is one mili one nigga who's actually in the military to check your shit and be like, yo, that's not, that's not that. Wait, hold on. What branch you part of? What hood you from? Where you from? Where you, what, 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 what you claim? Oh, you live what, what like, all it takes is for one actual military nigga to, to, to Pete game and he's done. Suspicious of Sean committing stolen valor, he almost immediately starts quizzing the guy about the minutia of military decorum. And it doesn't go well for Sean. What, uh, what unit were you in? I'm with the 2nd Battalion Rangers. 75th? 2nd. We're 75th Ranger Regiment with the 2nd Battalion. He starts to ask about questions and details of Sean's role as a soldier. His, back, I can, his heart is in his ass right now. I just walk bro, away. Bro, face getting red. Bro, I walk away. I guarantee you, I walk away. And bro, has a camera out recording me, I walk away, bro. You, I, me personally, he shouldn't be doing this in the first place, but if I am him, then you just gotta walk away at this point. I don't know why he, he trying to get caught like this tours and his campaigns. Sean had found himself in a public interrogation. Where'd you get your uh, three CIBs at? Afghanistan. All three? All three. You know you need to be in three different campaigns to get three uh, three CIBs, well, right? This one was from Afghanistan. Yeah. Okay. That's from Iraq. Okay. And that was from my second rotation back to Afghanistan. You know, no matter how many you do, you can only get one. When explaining his resume, Sean was essentially describing hey. a Call of Duty character or some fucking movie hero. <laughs> I'm what's called Attack One. All I do is I go out on missions. My campaign. All I do is hey, go out on, on missions. Hold on, hold on. Aren't like. No fat phobia or nothing, but you feel me? But aren't you supposed to be like fit in the military? You know what I'm saying? Most of the time, especially if you're in the army. This nigga is pushing like 300, 300. Like you could see it coming through the shirt. I you know think, I think saying? you could be, I think you could, he on cost story, but I think you could be a little, I don't know. You can be it. built like, like a linebacker and be big like that, but uh -huh. you can't be. This, this dude is, is an yeah. entire old, I'm not going to hold you, but. This nigga really said I'd be going on missions like, nigga, okay. He took me outside of mission lines from Afghanistan. As the interrogation continues, Ryan's demeanor slowly switches from inquisitive to outrage, and he starts publicly chastising this alleged stolen valor committer. He's calling a staff sergeant, staff sergeant, when he's wearing the rank of a staff sergeant. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Yo, he's cooking his shit. I'm not gonna lie, he's bro. cooking his shit. Bro did not do his homework at all. I'm not gonna. He called himself. Makes <laughs> much sense. Near the end of it, you can literally hear Ryan yelling out "Stolen Valor" in the mall. Okay. Here it is, guys. Stolen Valor at its finest. We're in a United States Army uniform. Why don't you just admit you're phony? Stolen Valor. Right here, Stone Valor! After the video was published to YouTube, it went viral and thousands of comments started flooding in. Many commenters agreeing with Ryan on this situation. Bro, this guy is a straight up legit hardcore veteran. He fought in the food court wars under General Sal. Dude, this guy isn't a phony. He's stationed at Camp KFC and reports to Colonel. Hey, yeah, there was, there was all this nigga ass cooking. Yeah. If this came out now, niggas gonna be like, yo, why y'all shaming him for being like, no, that nigga definitely was. was I'm saying, as I said it before, they said it. Man. He was definitely fucking stationed at fucking Popeyes for sure. Well, Sanders, scrolling through these comments, I realized this guy might be the most experienced soldier I've ever seen. He fought in so many different wars. Brian Burke was concerned that Sean had been using this military attire to wars? solicit yeah. military discounts throughout the mall as it was Black Friday at the time. After the story went viral on YouTube, news reporters got that a hold ridiculous. of Sean. <laughs> that is ridiculous. He contact information and bombarded him with calls over the matter. Some even went to his house and tried to get a hold of him there. At the residence, a woman would answer the door and claim that Yetman had a military background but wouldn't provide any additional details. Yetman's fiance, Adrian Lally, said that the blowback from the video had been vicious and Sean had lost his job and had a complete mental breakdown. Quote, the phone calls do not stop, and we are now hearing death threats. All of this has us concerned for our children and their safety. Damn, hearing death threats from, from military motherfuckers must be scary as shit. I mean, to be fair though, 
in GTA, by the way. <laughs> that but, is a different type of threat. <laughs> shouldn't, have, shouldn't have done that, though. You know what I'm saying? She wrote, quote, really he is a good with man with shit. a big heart, and this backlash has spiraled him into a deep depression. Adrian Lally also maintained that Sean didn't receive any sort of military discounts while shopping. While the fiance claimed the man had served, it's been reported that Yedman's name was never found in any database of army members who had undergone ranger training at Fort Benning. The man hadn't been criminally charged, but was facing a lot of harassment, and this was Ryan Burke's comment on that. That's a shame. My intention was to have this guy put on blast so he stops doing it. And if it was in fact true that Sean Yedman committed stolen valor, it wouldn't have even been the first time that he had done something similar to that. It was later discovered that- Thank you, Garo. Thank you for that. they just say it was illegal? And then they said, he said that he didn't do anything illegal? He said it's a uh, misdemeanor. He said it's a misdemeanor, so yeah. Uh, Garo, thank you for, for, for timing out that nigga. I hate them, them, them bait questions so niggas can get canceled. Would you, nigga, ask me would I rather be racist or sexist, nigga? I'm just like, bro, are you dead ass? Did you really? Want I that didn't ass? see it. I hate, I, I hate when niggas it. ask questions to 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 go clip it and put it on Twitter. I hate when niggas try to purposely cancel people. Like, what's wrong with you? Nigga? It even been it wasn't fact true that Sean Yetman committed stolen valor. Bro, I asked you a question. It wouldn't have even been the answers. first time that he had done something similar to that. It was later discovered that in 2003, Sean Yedman was arrested while wearing the coat of a Philadelphia police officer that had died in the line of duty. Sean was sentenced to three months of probation for that crime. It's been several years since the posting date of this alleged stolen valor incident, and it doesn't appear that the man featured in the video ever faced any sort of criminal prosecution. Rather, it appears his fate is to forever remain a laughing stock on YouTube. Damn. RP man. RP. Fraudulent impersonators and imposters usually come in the form of individuals <laughs> trying to masquerade as a professional or as a sort of Yes, exterior so so like I don't get spam rated or anything. Sort of esteemed practice, before. such as a doctor, a military no. serviceman, or a police officer. <laughs> well, there's also a cohort of individuals that fake being disabled to get special treatment. And that's no, what this chapter like, is all about. Individual to do that if you shit. do that, I want you to know, like, if anybody, if you did that, even once, you're going to hell. If people who fake disabilities or fake being homeless are definitely Sick. going to hell, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, take, for example, the case of Rutledge Diaz, the f he did it. fourth. For over a year and a half, this 29-year-old Louisiana man used babysitting apps to secure women's aid in taking care of his 17-year-old brother named Corey who was said to be mentally and physically disabled. However, Corey wasn't actually a real person, and Rutledge would use this persona to trick medical workers into coming to his house and changing his diapers. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. How old did they say he was? Did he, well, Chad, how old did, did, did he say bro was? That's a grown ass man right there too. Yeah, grown ass man. Like, are you serious? So I don't give a fuck. That's the grown ass. I man. think I thought he said seventeen is the, of the person that don't exist. His, his little brother who doesn't exist is seventeen. Twenty nine. Grown ass man too. Bro is quite literally pushing thirty doing this shit. How do you get that in, in to that point in your life where you're doing shit? How do you like come that? up with an idea like this? This is that sad as Persona fuck. to trick medical workers into coming to his house and changing his diapers. What kind of sexual gratification? How do you even like go back if that uh -huh. brother name getting at fake being dis doctor see how old to get special treatment. And that's what this chapter is all about. Take, for example, the case of Rutledge Diaz IV. For over a year and a half, this 29-year-old Luis Rutledge would use this persona to trick medical workers into coming to his house and changing his man. diapers. Rutledge had convinced these women to treat Corey like he was a child. And he would invite these women to his house under the premise of them taking care of Corey when he in fact was Corey and was faking being disabled. On top of diaper change. I, I was thinking that he was faking being disabled for bread or some kind of monetary gain. No, dude is actually like sick. You know what I'm saying? Not that that's either e better, but this is like highly worse. Like the, the dude is like sick in the head. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. There's like, he doesn't gain nothing out of it, yeah, but he's quite motivation. literally not gaining anything out That's of it. That's sick. Just right. This is the worst person we've seen on here. At least the, uh, 
at least the army dude. Well, what can I say about the army dude? The army dude wasn't wasn't as bad as this. I'm not gonna lie. To you. Okay, you could not say that in no. the chat. What he said? The army dude was not as bad as this. I'm not gonna lie to you, right? Rutledge would also convince these girls to transport him around town in a child's car seat. Rutledge pulled this sick scam on multiple women, and his diapers changed many hands in the process. But he couldn't role play it as a disabled person forever. Eventually, he got exposed. On November 13th of 2019, Louisiana State Police arrested Rutledge Diaz for convincing a series of women to change his diapers after a woman reported suspicions to police. Investigate I actually want to see the court hearing, like how that went. I really want to know the why on why he was doing this. Others say that Rutledge confessed and claimed that he was trying to address his own sexual trauma. As a result of his... There we go. There we go. Niggas really just be saying anything, bro. What? <laughs> it's like, yo, that email, bro. I forgot I even had that email. Yo, this is like... <sighs> that is sick. I don't know what to say. I really have no words right now. I'm not going to his crimes, he was hit with four counts of sex trafficking. Diaz initially pleaded guilty to the dude. charges, but immediately withdrew his plea after finding out the victims and prosecutors were requesting jail time for him. Rutledge's attorney claimed that she didn't realize prosecutors would push for incarceration. The man was- That see, they should. I will give bro life personally, just cause I don't think he should be out and interacting with other people personally. But that's just me though. So what do you mean he's surprised that he's getting incarceration? Like that's the least they could do. He's facing up to 10 years for the charges. As a result of his crimes, a judge would sentence Rutledge to serve five years probation where he was also requested to maintain employment, undergo internet addiction counseling, and is banned from using social media. That is from pretty sad shit. Niggas have to write on the judge has to to tell you to get a fucking job the judge had told this nigga you have to be employed that's the that's the rule one of if one of your rules on your court ordering is to have be employed that is sad as fuck you know your life on this the nigga told you to get a job that's tough why are they spending that yeah what the fuck nigga yo that's sad as shit bro i'm not the lying. emote Ellie, I hate that. That's the best emo. Undergo inter five years probation where he was also requested to maintain employment, <clears throat> undergo internet addiction counseling, and is banned from using social media. He was also compelled to complete 400 hours of community service. The women that were Jesus. deceived into changing the diapers were concerned that probation wasn't enough and that he would reoffend. Unfortunately, they were correct. The who would have fucking guessed? The dude is a freak. I'm not gonna lie. This is why I said y'all should have gave the nigga life. But hey, don't listen to me. Don't At least listen. 20 years. Bro, bro, that, I, I think I think life is cool. Bro, did not have enough time to think. Like, like, like they just like be giving these freak ass niggas all the free time in the world, bro. But then be arresting people for uh fucking weed crimes, like nigga in GTA, by the way. But like, come on, bro. Police discovered wasn't enough and that he would reoffend. Unfortunately, they were correct. Police discovered that while on probation, Rutledge was in contact with a Jefferson Parish woman who he had hired to change his diapers. How? Rutledge sent the woman $50 in advance and told her that he had prior issues and was being cared for by family members. Because of this, he would be arrested in December of 2021 Dude has and a charged problem. with more human trafficking charges. The man later pled guilty and received one year in prison and five years of probation for this infraction. Uh, how much y'all want to get? The, how many years of probation are they going to give this nigga? No. Put him in the cell for real. <laughs> Three answers. What do y'all think is going to happen next? He's in prison right, right now for a year. <sighs> Is he going to A, get out of prison and turn his life around? Is he going to B, um, reoffend again and do the exact same thing and get locked up again? Or is he going to C, none of the above? I don't know how none of the above could happen, but let's see. Or or no, C, do something worse than what he already did. <laughs> nah, C, do something worse. Yeah. C, a, change his life around. B, do the same thing after he gets out. C, do something worse. <laughs> B and C. <laughs> So let's see. I don't know how worse you can get after that, but let's see. No, nah, the answer is pretty much crazy. serves as the end of Rutledge's BBC. Dude, come on. Story for the time being. Talking but surprisingly the, uh, enough, that's not the station. only individual that has faked being disabled for diaper changing. Okay, it was an <laughs> A, but there's another person. It was actually A, surprisingly, but well, there to our is knowledge. No way there's a trend of y'all niggas doing this yeah, shit. There's a whole clan Reddit niggas. It has to be. 
Um, well, to to my knowledge, I want to say it's A, but we don't. The nigga probably still in prison right now, so we don't know. But um, this nigga had to do some Meet words. Paul Anthony. Mitch. Oh yeah, this dude is his eyes. Is, why is his eyes like that, bro? This nigga has gold in his eyes. What the fuck is this nigga crying? Fucking vibranium. What is going on here? Oh shit, Shaka. he does. This the is fuck? the face of a man accused of faking Down syndrome in an effort to get favors from female <sighs> medical on, workers. In 2018, Paul Anthony Menchaca, 31 years old at the time, worked as a school crossing guard. This man decided to take advantage of mobile apps like CareLinks and Care.com. Using these Never apps, Paul allegedly shit. posed as a woman named Amy, and using this Amy persona would hire women to take care of her son. Amy being Paul and the son also being Paul. Using care apps, Paul managed to trick the women to go to his residence, where he would act extremely disabled, essentially role-playing as if he had Down syndrome. One woman claimed that she changed his diaper and helped him bathe over 30 times. Qu wow. Well, I almost just threw up. Wow, you this, that's, that's Quote, He sick. needed shower and grooming. He couldn't use the bathroom himself. He couldn't really be alone by himself. He acted like a child. His whole demeanor- Shout out to the caregivers. He better than me, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was childlike. He would act in tantrums, talk like- Because if I'm a caregiver, I knew the he, he was doing this on purpose. I'm suing the fuck out. I'm suing the fuck out this nigga after the fact. If, I, if I'm the caregivers and I found out this nigga was doing this, and he's not actually like, you know what I'm saying, like that, I'm suing this nigga for everything he got. Which is probably nothing to be fair. Like yeah. a child, act like a child. Another caregiver is quoted as saying, he did ask me a few times to come over and help him shower, but I was incredibly oh, uncomfortable with that. that. In addition to diaper too. changes and bathing care, Paul, while posing as Amy, would tell these caregivers to take him on trips and take him shopping as well. Posing as Amy, Paul would allegedly request that caregivers give special attention to sensitive areas of the body requesting thorough cleanings of his genitals. Dude, yeah. side note, you remember that nigga that used to be screaming at fucking 11 a.m. in the old door? Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's the... <laughs> boy! Like, at the same like, time, nigga, at the same time, every day. It was always day, 11 a.m., bro. I don't know why. At the same time, every day. Um, please, can we get somebody to give this... Please give this nigga not, like, at least 10. Please at least Fuck, 10 years. Uh, 20. The last nigga got 10. Women and got involved split in these half. cleanings yeah, later true. reported to police that Menchaca <sighs> would become sexually aroused when they put their hands around his private parts. You know you are not getting no play. Like, how is it that bad, nigga? How is it that bad? You're not getting no play. You got to find fucking life hacks and ex exploits in life, nigga, to try to get, get around that shit. Like, that's sad as if fuck, it was bro. really this bad, why doesn't he just go somewhere... Where you know what is legal and yeah, like why don't you can do that? Like you, there you could do that in some places. Why don't like, you just do that? I, I, I don't like it. Like, doing this, like that's ridiculous. Like come on, bro. with no bitches, that's a motherfucker. That's tough. Some claim that during nah, cleanings he could be seen smiling and would even clap. This diaper changing abuser would eventually be busted in September of 2018. Menchaca was exposed after one of his caregivers became suspicious of the Amy persona and dug into Menchaca's background and found he had a different family entirely. This would result in the caregiver talking to the family, explaining what they were doing for Menchaca. The family would explain that their son didn't have Down syndrome and certainly didn't need any sort of diaper change. Imagine your parents hearing that. Soon after discovering this, the mortified caregiver would call police. In September of 2018, Paul Anthony Menchaca was arrested and charged with three counts of sexual abuse and one count of fraudulent schemes. In a hearing, Menchaca addressed the court, stating the following. Quote, I just want to let you know I am special needs. I This nigga doubled down. I didn't think that was going to he really I, doubled I, down. I didn't think yeah. he would. He There's really no... doubled down. That's crazy. <coughs> that nigga really I thought he this would apologize. Nigga... <laughs> his parents literally confirmed did he, did he wasn't. Parents... And this nigga doubled down. He said fuck. <laughs> I do have a low IQ level, and my mom. Well, the low IQ level is definitely fact. I don't think he's lying about that, that part. That doesn't mean you have Down syndrome. That doesn't mean that you you have Down syndrome at all, bro. And the fact that the nigga it's would not even not equivalent. The fact that he would even lie about that is insane.
Mom and dad both have paperwork to prove that. And I'm starting to talk to my dad about getting me some help and getting me into a counselor and probably like a rehab center to talk to somebody. According the to IQ the Maricopa definitely low County on that, Court Records website, it appears Paul pled guilty to at least one count of sexual abuse and seems to have also received some probation. That's me saying it appears that way though. I can't speak with confidence regarding the outcome of his trial. Whatever the case, the reports describing Paul's alleged behavior in this story, extremely disturbing stuff. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, now, hold on. He got hit with, what, it was like three counts of sexual assault. Yeah, and then, and one, then one count of count. fraudulent schemes. So if he pleaded guilty to, to one, one count of anything, doesn't that mean the nigga's lying? <laughs> And uh, I guess in court they can't do yeah, that. Yeah, they no, can't necessarily I would just like, do that. But then, does, like, he basically he, said, I'm lying. <laughs> why did he do that, though? Why did you only plead guilty to one count and not the other? Nigga, they're going to find you guilty of that shit. I don't know what the fuck he thought he was trying to do reverse that. psychology and be like, you know what I'm saying? If I plead guilty to one of them, they're going to really think I'm special. You know what I'm saying? That's like, what he was bro, trying to do. This nigga, I guarantee he represented himself. There's no way he had a lawyer. There's no way he had a competent lawyer. <laughs> he got one of them, lawyer. um, them free ones. <laughs> All right. I think it's 30 days, five years for SA. I'm not sure. Okay, but he still has two other counts that are not accounted for. They're not gonna just say not guilty on those. And he said the trial's still going, but they're just not gonna be like, oh, it's still okay. going. When yeah, the fuck the, did the this trial, happen? I don't know, but the trial's not over according to to, to that. So. Niggas take flight with the big ass ears. Ain't no his, fucking way. His ears not as big as that one nigga from that Jubilee video. But okay, next. One. That was oh my goodness. Yeah, that shit was. A that movie. video was funny for the wrong <laughs> reason. <laughs> One of the most disturbing professions that one could pose as is that of a police officer. A police badge comes with authority and power, power that can easily be exploited by one with bad intentions. There have been many police impersonators out there, but few as strange as the case of the 18 year old autistic one. The story begins on September 9th of 2019, when shit. an Albuquerque police officer witnessed a young man in civilian clothing and a police badge on his belt performing a traffic stop near Interstate 40. This peculiar looking would be law enforcer that with 18 like the nigga year old Brendan <laughs> yeah. The officer pulls his vehicle over to investigate the suspicion. If you, nigga, if, if somebody like this ever pulled me over, bro, guarantee, where, I don't know, what did he say, what country this is in or state this is? I don't know where this at. But if any, of course, oh, it's in Albuquerque? Maybe the is that what the cop is driving, or is that what he's in? I think that's he, that's who he's pulling over. Oh my goodness, bro! I was about to say I would have did the dash. In in Albuquerque, GTA. <laughs> nigga, if if I'm in fucking Albuquerque, what's that? New Mexico, nigga. If I'm in New Mexico and somebody like just pull me over, I'm keeping. I'm, I'm guarantee I'm driving. Like, there's I've never seen a cop with this outfit in my fucking life. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is crazy. Circumstance. When questioned by the officer, he seemed nervous and claimed to be under equipped and not in uniform. Brendan claimed to be on his How I'm not gonna lie, that nigga has never done a push up in his life. <laughs> I, I'm not taking anything that nigga, nigga says seriously. Don't you be making you do some certain type of training in police academy? That's what I'm saying. Like, How do you pull somebody over <laughs> under equipped? You don't got no training. You pull up in whatever the fuck this nigga driving. That don't even look like a police vehicle. I'm not gonna hoot you. Um, I, that don't look like a Ford, that don't look like a Dodge nigga, that don't look like a, a, a truck at all, so I don't know what this nigga is doing. Um, unequipped, uh, uninsured, and just pulling people over with the wrong outfit, nigga. This is ridiculous. It I'm not gonna lie, if bro does not have handcuffs, a taser, a blick, somebody's doing the dash, like somebody, you know what I'm saying? There's no way I'm letting this nigga pull me over, I'm not gonna lie to you way to the courthouse that person got that, guy, that person that got put over has to be dumb got to be i'm not gonna lie there's no way i'm allowing this nigga to pull me over also when he spotted the person he pulled over going 120 miles an hour brendan tries his best to convince the real police officer that he's legit but his efforts don't go over well how are you a police officer with no identification he don't even have a badge. This nigga doesn't have a this badge at all. This nigga said, this is all I got. At that right. moment, I'm doing the dash. <laughs> this dude doesn't even have a badge. I know this police officer is so confused. This nigga's hard in his ass right now. I'm not going to If you it. ever get to a point where, well, unless you're in some like drastic situation, but if it's just a regular pullover and you ever get to a point where you're questioning the officer, right. at that point, you might as well just leave because this nigga doesn't know how to do his job anyway. In GTA. But nigga... <clears throat> 
no badge on this dude at all. Like, there's no, no badge. Like, this, this dude who got pulled over. <laughs> Nobody <might>, cam. <laughs> this dude who got pulled over might actually be like. As soon as I see, like, okay, if he has the lights, okay, I'll stop. But as soon as I see what he looked like, bro, one look, I'm, I'm guaranteed, bro. I'm not stopping. I'm not going with you. Like, you know, DMX time. He just got random siren. Like, there's no reason why this dude should still be here. Yo, DMX is literally. Crazy, <laughs> right? I remember that. I'm under. I'm under equipped. I was just heading over there to the courthouse. <clears throat> the courthouse for what? For what? To get my crap. Crap? I know it makes no sense. I caught him going 120 down I-40. Okay. Why do you have lights on this vehicle? Personal. I I know. You have an idea? You have a personal oh, vehicle. Is the police talking to him? Yeah, the police is. Oh, he got, the nigga okay. got stopped by police officers. And <laughs> that, he was pulling over somebody. He got stopped by police officers. Yo. No, I keep back my uniform. Okay. What's your name? Uh, Brendan Wazinski. The officer who. The fact that you, nigga, you're not even in the same department. And so if you pull somebody over and it's not your jurisdiction, bro, like you already. So if they don't know your name, you already fucked the buck all out of you, bro. Who discovered Brendan called a supervisor over the matter who recommended he put Brendan in the back of his squad car. Thank you all. Hold on. Do you mind if I call my wife and tell her I'm not coming home tonight? Your wife was once you been tell I guarantee his wife been telling him to get a fucking job, bro, over the past like year, bro. Yo, there's just no way you dress up as a cop and get arrested. <laughs> like yeah. that stuff. There's no way that dude is married. That dude looks like 18 max. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's not no way that dude is married. So I need your lean back on the button. No way he crying. He is 18. Brendan Jesus was Christ. arrested and taken back to the police station where he was questioned. When asked Goofy about the flashing outfit. lights on his vehicle, he said that he installed them himself and acknowledged the police radio inside of his car. Brendan then claimed that his badge was from his father who had died in the line of duty while working as a policeman. Internal investigation revealed that only eight officers had been killed at that department in the line of duty and his father was not one of them. Brendan was in How are you lying to the police officer about the you know they can search. That is literally the worst thing to lie about. You're lying about the fact that your your father was a police officer who got shot. You know they can look that up. With that's like a couple months. They can find if uh, how many people died at that station. This like nigga is an idiot. Zinski was charged with impersonating a police officer. Body cam footage showcasing his detainment went viral on social media and hilarity ensued. Like got on Update, jeans. Brendan was dropped upon charges after impersonating a judge what in his own fuck? trial. It's insane oh, how disturbing this actually is. He has future serial killer written all over him. When his parents told him he could be anything he wanted, he took it literally. Imagine if a fake cop was arrested by another <laughs> cop. In the months following the arrest and charges, Brendan's family said that he had gotten a massive amount of death threats and had lost jobs over the map okay oh, no shit <laughs> no you can't do that to people bro i guarantee if they just keep letting him go bro he was gonna get a blick and just start like putting people at gunpoint start taking a shit start taking shit he's not supposed to like you can't do that bro like that's a good point not being able to support his family is rough he has a four you're 18 four month old little girl it adds to his depression whose fault is that depression Attorneys from the public defender's office said that Brendan had been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and attention deficit hyperactive disorder and suggested that these ailments played a hand in his decision to pretend to be a deputy. They even requested mental health court when a psychologist and clinician both recommended him for it. But the district attorney denied the request. Quote, he chose to make the decision he made that evening. By his own admission, he even knew what he was doing was wrong. On March 16th of 2020, Brendan showed up to court to plead no contest for impersonating a peace officer. The judge sentenced him to a year on probation and ruled that he can't carry any firearms, deadly weapons, or handcuffs, and ordered an evaluation for counseling. Bro's lucky he just got a year of probation, bro. They don't play about that. In July of 2020, Brendan would violate his probation after failing to attend a probation meeting. His probation officer says, quote, At this point, Your Honor, I am asking that the defendant be sanctioned in custody for 10 days and his probation be reinstated with zero tolerance for further violations. These violations were not getting a psych exam, providing a false address, and missing a scheduled meeting. After this... What? summer of 2020 violation brendan has remained out of trouble we'll have to wait and see if this peculiar young man ever reoffends. i don't give a that dude is a loser i'm gonna keep it this aside. nigga only got a year of probation. probation and why the fuck she put in the rules you can't carry a firearm 
Oh, well, no fucking shit. Bro, you can't man. carry a firearm unless you're licensed to do so. That dude is crazy. Rod, can you kiss the camera at the same time as me? Yo, ban that nigga. <laughs> yo, 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 it's hump day. Tag three big big guys niggas that you, you, you what did he say? Uh, whatever he said, something like that. Um, Whatever he said. Huh? Fake, oh my god, this she was throwing up gang signs. I, there's no fucking way. <laughs> what the fuck hairstyle is this, nigga? Oh yeah, tag. She, tag. Um, what's it called? That's uh Goku. I mean Gohan Super Saiyan two. That does look like she got the one. She she got <laughs> tag three big deck ass niggas that you want Yo, me to tag. I know this shit sounds crazy out there. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> That's what the nigga said, dude. You might imagine that landing a job where one Anime communicates cuts, government yeah. messages to citizens would require a bit of vetting before hiring. But in all reality, there have been multiple instances of ASL fraud. All right, why he tagged three niggas in the chat? Why he actually tagged people? Okay. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most bizarre. As of 2017, the year that this story took place, there were 13 states that required sign language interpreters to hold state licenses. Florida was not one. Bro, what's going on? Oh it's my goodness. Florida. I'm not going to lie, bro. Florida, don't worry. That whole shit that's going on with TikTok right now, Florida, don't worry about that shit, bro. Y'all had, that's like the beast of y'all worried, bro. Florida, don't worry about that shit, nigga. So, hold like, on. <laughs> So if New York is a Gmod server, then what is Florida? Cause like <laughs> recently, it's not looking too good for them. It's GTA Six, nigga. Florida is GTA Six, nigga. It's GTA Gotta nigga. be. Ain't no Bro. fucking way. But the thing about Florida is, I just feel like y'all really just do not get shit on track. Everything I like in Florida, niggas defend it. Now I can go ahead and give New York a pass. I can even try to give Detroit a pass. You know what I'm saying? Because even though Detroit is Section Eight everywhere i don't hear too many crazy stories from detroit no more that's a fact florida but you hear then again detroit doesn't have access to any type of resources yeah, there's, so there's no radio towers there. report it. ain't new no news reporters to report yeah, exactly <laughs> florida every day you hear about some stupid shit going no, on yeah that's florida, a fact bro. one of them oh no isn't from you man through alligator and pedestrian <laughs> isn't your rage from florida yes and your rage defends florida with his life talk about some oh no nah, that's not broward though that's not bro that's only like y'all be guessing that's not florida. orange county that's not right. <laughs> It's everywhere. November 28th of 2017, the Seminole County, Florida police <clears throat> held a news conference announcing the arrest of a Seminole Heights murder suspect. During the televised broadcast with news crews present, police chief Dugan spoke to the public about the capture of an alleged serial killer. The press conference featured many family members of those affected by the killer's actions. One of these family members in attendance was actually deaf and new sign language. So as this press conference is going on and the <laughs> ASL that. interpreter is signing away, this deaf family member finds that the sign language interpreter is just putting out complete gibberish. She's just doing Zip. fucking jutsu. She don't even know what she's doing. Why are you doing Shorty that? Shorty said. She just she just doing fucking take K symbols, bro. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> she don't like, even know what she's doing, bro. That's the, what are you doing? Manol government agencies also started getting phone calls from concerned citizens. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you know how bad your luck has to be to get packed by a deaf Yo, person? Like that's just, crazy. Bro, a deaf person just happened to be in the area. When she did it, she, I know she she felt so like unlucky after that, bro. That's tough. That the ASL That's interpreter tough. was signing unintelligible nonsense. The goal of this police press conference intended to ease the minds of the Seminole Heights residents. You know, they had captured a serial killer, but in all honesty, it just created more bewilderment and opened up a new can of worms. What the fuck was going on with this sign language interpreter? Well, the signer in question was a woman named Derlin Roberts. Derlin. According to reports, Derlin showed up at the police press conference and posed as an interpreter. Tampa police spokesman Steve Haggerty told reporters that he didn't ask enough questions about the woman's ability. Quote, from what I understand, she knows enough about sign language that she was able to fake it. Haggerty also said that Roberts appeared to know what she was doing. The usual procedure for hiring I mean, you couldn't say that about anybody, nigga. Like, if, if she doesn't know sign language and she just knew, looked like she knew what she was doing, you could really say that about anybody, bro. 
That's, I'm just saying. An interpreter in Tampa is that the city relies on prepaid contractors to acquire them. Police simply assumed that Derlin was hired by one of these contractors <laughs> and let her in. Footage from the event you, showed Derlin signing bro. away before hmm? anyone had even spoken. According Come to on. experts, this is what some of the signing that Derlin communicated translated into. 51 <laughs> hours ago, YouTube. zero, 12, 22, murder three minutes and 14 weeks ago in old murder four five fifty five thousand plea 10 arrest murder bush three age 24. i know Sorry, she was the uh well i don't know if the, the the deaf person was a girl or a boy but i know the deaf person in there was confused as fuck bro they didn't know what was going on bro was talking about straight nonsense i'm not gonna lie to you bro she looked up there she's like what the fuck, fuck? She <laughs> confused as the nigga was talking about straight nonsense within in sign language. Yeah, that was an actual segment communicated by Derlin signing during this press conference. She's a total expert, right? Here's some of the highlights of Roberts' performance. At this point, I don't think it's getting any better. The sound is what it is. We're doing the uh, preliminary yeah. mic checks. What is she doing? Good evening. As you recall, on October 9th, Benjamin Mitchell was 22 years old and he was murdered. That was 51 days ago. Uh, uh, about 2.30 this afternoon, we received some information. Damn, really knowing that this is a sign language, it just gives it a whole nother context. Like, it just looks so fucking crazy. <sighs> to be fair... I wouldn't have caught her ass. I wouldn't have caught her. To be fair, like unless you're you're deaf or you know sign language, nobody would have caught her. I'm not like lying. that's literally that's so crazy. unfortunate that there was somebody that knew that in the crowd. It makes you think how many people were actually how making that shit. How many people were in the crowd? I don't. He said all the same. Because it doesn't sound people. like it's a lot of people. It's <laughs> tough. About Mr. Donaldson having a firearm at the McDonald's. These yeah. folks. This Shorty is friends. doing a hula dance. She said. I mean, obviously, they were very concerned. Uh, I think she, did she throw a crib? <laughs> I mean, obviously, they were very concerned. The <laughs> video so low quality. I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to you. Concerned, uh, spotting a gun. I don't know how much they knew about if this was actually uh, a, a serial murder uh, uh, or if they were just concerned about the gun. But what do you have to say about that? We got a break. Somebody stepped up and did the right thing. And that, that's what we needed. We had said all along that no tip is too small and somebody stepped forward and gave us what we needed. The internet well, oh, would quickly- Hold on, I have two questions. What, one, did that nigga just say no tip is too small? And then two, <laughs> how the fuck do you, how, how, how do you stutter in sign language? Cause yeah. then one of them niggas was stuttering a whole lot and she just like kind of stopped. Yeah, he meant like tip, like tips, like tips to help, helping tips. See, niggas want to take no. out. That niggas talking about some bullshit. Much. That they niggas chatting. No that sounds what crazy. Like, what is chatting? That sounds crazy, my <laughs> brother. What is he talking about? The internet would quickly discover this bizarre video, and after learning of the circumstances, would go to comment Devon, thank sections you. to share their opinions on the matter. That fake sign language lady is going straight to hell. <laughs> this is so funny, lol. Can't stop laughing. Had I known that sign language is going to be this easy, I would have done the same myself. The absolute audacity to stand there and pretend to do sign language on TV, lol. Maybe we should just use subtitles. At least her sign for murdering is the same all the way through. Lamau, she just throwing her hands up in the air and literally waving like she don't care. The audacity. And that fool looked so confident standing front and center. While this footage Damn. is definitely comical in many ways, the whole premise of this is quite disturbing <sighs> to think that someone could be deranged enough to not only fake sign language, all right, but want to in the first place and the fact that they were able to do it for a government agency That's not crazy. to mention that one of the victims of the serial killer was deaf and in the audience at the time like they're just when it rains it pours i guess jesus christ a police spokesman later told reporters that derlin roberts wouldn't be facing any criminal charges over the matter their justification for not wanting to press charges being that they didn't do the proper research in vetting this woman's credentials and didn't think that they would 
would be able to prosecute her with that in mind. The spokesman's quote is saying, I don't know if she was just trying to be helpful and just didn't do a good job. I don't know if she was trying to put something over on somebody. I have no idea. News reports attempted to get into contact with Roberts and even went to her home, but never got an answer. While what she did was a major ethical violation, it technically wasn't criminal. That being said, though, a look into this woman's history indicates a streak of fraud. In fact, doing a bit of browsing through Derlin Roberts' criminal history, one can find a yearbook of mugshots. A yearbook of mugshots. Mugshots is crazy. Zach's good night, man. What? It's crazy. How many? Hold on. With an How arrest many history spanning back over. Oh yeah. How many people? Oh well, hold on. All right, King Cloud, thank you for the 100 bits. Appreciate oh. you. What the fuck did she expect to uh, get from this? Shit, I don't know. How many people have successfully evaded the government in this one video? Like, <laughs> Was it just two? I've only heard two. One. Technically, the first nigga, the doctor, yeah, the, the, and then her. <laughs> 24 well. <laughs> charges ranging from aggravated battery to burglary to and guess where both of their what the fuck guess where the, <laughs> what the, what the, f the first person and the second person i mean the first dude the, the doctor and her evaded the government guess where both of them are from florida <laughs> it's not, it's not a coincidence <laughs> It's not a coincidence, both of them are from Florida. Back over 24 <clears throat> years, from charges ranging from aggravated battery to burglary to false imprisonment, grand theft, fraud, witness tampering, petite theft, oh. writing bad checks, and more. Holy shit. How the fuck did she get false imprisonment? <laughs> what? <laughs> I have never, well, actually, I have seen that charge Holy before. shit. Oh my she God. got grand oh, theft. One of Derlin's most Jesus notorious Christ. fraud charges stems from a time where she scammed a school for the disabled. Oh yeah, she's going to hell. There's no way she's not going to hell. <laughs> I don't even know how she got that job with all that. Where the, how, how is it, don't you, can't you, how are you getting government she's job? stacking up these criminal charges like accolades. <laughs> how are you, how do you get a government job with all that, with the criminal record that long? <laughs> You seen she was doing sign language. <laughs> oh, niggas do not be doing background checks don't exist anymore. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I'm thinking that digital footprint shit don't be working in Florida, bro. Like niggas don't be checking, bro. They got bigger things to worry about. According yeah. to reports, back in 2004, Derlin ran the Sago Palm Education Academy a private school for children with special needs. While in this management position, Roberts misappropriated a fortune in education funds from the Florida McKay Scholarship Fund and used that money for her own personal benefit in a scheme that stretched from 2004 to 2009. It's alleged that the woman stole over $350,000 from the fund. It's also said that Roberts is- 350 350K from a disabled school. She's never seen the gates, bro, at all, bro. Assume the identity of a former employee, Angela Darian, a psychologist and social worker who quit the school after just a few weeks when Roberts failed to pay her. Roberts assumed Angela's identity in 2004 <coughs> after authorities revoked funding due to her criminal past. After quitting, Angela Darian had moved to New York and had no idea that her identity was stolen by Roberts. Once investigators discovered Damn. that Derlin had committed identity fraud on this woman, they informed Angela that her identity had been stolen. She says, quote, it was something out of a fairy tale book, you know? Not even a fairy tale book, something out of a horror book. They should throw the key away on her. When the scheme finally unraveled, Roberts was charged with organized fraud and grand theft. She was sentenced to serve five years in prison. Angela Darian comments further. Five years is not enough for what she did to these children. What she did to the community, what she did to the parents, what she did to me, five years is not enough. After the bizarre ASL scheme that Derlin had committed in 2017, Angela Darian was actually contacted for comment regarding this, uh, new uh, sort of deception that Derlin was up to. As to why she thinks Derlin did this, she says, quote, it puts her back in the limelight to give her credibility to do whatever she needs to do. She's legit because she's on TV and she's interpreting and blah, blah, blah. So if they trust her, we can trust her. So she might've been looking for credibility. Derlin Roberts will forever live in infamy as being a member